Well, this week, I want to break down Trump's next chapter. Because two and a half months after the big tech oligarch seized control of his social media accounts and effectively kicked the leader of the free world off the World Wide Web, President Trump was back in the headlines with news that he was on the verge of launching his very own social networking platform. And conservatives abound rejoiced. I think the president does know what direction that he wants to head here, and this new platform is going to be big, and everyone wants him. He's going to bring millions and millions, tens of millions of people to this new platform. He wants a space where everyone can feel welcomed, where people don't feel like, you know, uh, the fact checkers are going to be all over them. Look, I get it. People are excited at the prospect of a digital resurgence from the team captain of America First. But if we're going to save our freedoms from those who seek to drum free speech and conservatism into the abyss forever, we need to accept some hard truths now and right now. That yes, when it comes to ending the flagrant abuse of our God-given rights, love him or hate him, Donald J. Trump is uniquely positioned to leverage a free market to preserve free speech in a modern digital world. But a Trump social media app by itself fails to address the obscene big tech overreach that claimed the president's 88 million Twitter followers in the first place and now threaten to undermine the principles of our free society forever. Because let's be very clear about the threat that we are actually facing right now. Five companies by themselves are altering the trajectory of the world and compromising our basic human rights in the process. That is not hyperbole. That is actually what is happening. Digital platforms are no longer just an alternative method of communication. They are increasingly used as a proxy for our entire existence in the actual world. According to Pew Research Center, 54% of all U.S. Facebook users say they regularly access Facebook to get the news. 59% of all U.S. Twitter users say they access that platform to get the news as well. And yet none of these platforms are obligated to honor the constitutional protections designed to enshrine a free press or ensure free speech because the exemptions we granted them to help build a better world are now being used to infringe on the freedoms required to preserve our constitutional republic. Today, the overwhelming majority of constitutionally protected activities occur on a digital landscape that is not beholden to the Constitution we have set forth. And our lawmakers remain reluctant to act. So yes, we are in the midst of a digital Cold War over the key linchpins that will define the 21st century. Our speech, our data, and who truly controls it. And as nice as it may be to have a Trump social media platform, that cannot solve that key problem. Not when Facebook still has 1.8 billion daily active users, and not when we just watched Parler be deconstructed and destroyed virtually overnight with the flip of a switch by companies immune from any and all consequences for doing so. With Apple and Google controlling nearly 99% of the mobile market, adding a new app to a closed ecosystem we do not control that is free to kick us out of their anti-conservative Garden of Eden as they see fit is not a solution. Without a free and fair operating systems platform, nothing else will matter. And so as it turns out, while many conservatives may want Trump to start a new patriot political party, Perhaps what he should be focused on is establishing a new Patriot phone. Give innovators a space to create, knowing that freedom of speech is protected and that the freedom of the press will be honored and watch consumers light their iPhones on fire in the street just so that they can buy a Patriot phone and usher in a new digital era that celebrates American-style freedom. And if there is anyone who can facilitate the regional mass exodus required to reach critical mass and build that prosperous ecosystem, it is Donald J. Trump, a man who has dined with royalty, a man who texts with the people on the Forbes 400, the same people who lead the Fortune 500 companies, and a man who, as much as the left still hates to acknowledge, was the 45th president of these United States. There is a black hole in the digital landscape. It threatens to consume our freedoms and our liberties.
and if President Trump wants his next chapter of America First to matter, then the choice to me is clear. A new Patriot phone for the world beats a new social media app to use on one of China's iPhones.